takes a minute for the line to move. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. If you watched the show yesterday, you remember we had on a gentleman named Al Schmidt, who was about to turn 86, who reversed his heart disease at 80, which was incredible. Well, we have another incredible story of healing and transformation today. We're also going to explore nutrition and wellness and even do a few recipes with my guest, who is Dr. David Allen. But his story is that he actually almost died. Please welcome him to the show. I can't wait to hear that because what's it like to almost die? Hello. Hello, Chef. <laughs> Chef AJ, great to be here. It's and so nice yeah, to it's nice to tell my story because if I did die, I wouldn't be here. Well, that's true. Somebody else would have to tell it. <laughs> yeah, I'd much rather tell it. And this is a story I kept for a secret for about a year. I was, uh, it was the first Friday, the 13th of 2020. And if you could remember back then, Friday, March 13th, that was like a few days before the, everyone went crazy with the pandemic. So it was just about then. And I, maybe, maybe we could back up a little bit. I just want to share a little bit about who I am and what I do, and then we could get into the story. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I, I've been in practice for 40 years, over 40 years, and I consider myself a holistic uh, doctor, holistic. My specialty is chiropractic, but I have a very rich background in, in touch therapy, and I taught for 30 years in massage, all styles of massage. And I became a chiropractor in 1990. And I, one of the reasons why it's great to hook up with you, Chef, is that I started my journey in wellness back in the early 80s. And a lot of it was with nutrition. I studied a lot of the different types of diets. And I was doing some work with Harvey and Marilyn Diamond, who lived in, I lived in, in the Palisades and we were, I was working with her. I was, I was, I was on the diamond method <laughs> and it was a little bit like there was a, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the, of the style of, of eating or the way of living. It was I can't, I can't recall what their, their background was, but there was a lot of fruits in there and uh, uh, getting away from, from animal products. And I've explored the spectrum of diet. I went raw for a couple of years. And so I consider myself over the years, very healthy. And I started in the early eighties, with different types of massage and reflexology. And then I realized that I needed to do, do more with my family. I had a young family with a couple of, uh, a couple of kids and I went back to school and I got my chiropractic degree in 1990. And I just, I never could figure out how I want to practice because I had all these different mentors and different specialties a strong background of mine is in posture and movement, movement education, like the Alexander technique and Feldenkrais, which I'm sure you're aware of. But I had a mentor back in the early 80s. His name was Grant Ramey. And he had a style of movement education called embodiment. And I just loved it. We started to initially exchange sessions. And we did that for three years. And I learned his method. And it was all about how you can do things. How could you live life with the greatest of ease? How could you be comfortable when you do things, whatever it is? And that was really important to me because I was teaching massage and the massage kind of massage I did was structural body work. And it, if you've ever had structural body work, I mean, it's, it's, for the therapist, it's very taxing. It's very physical. So I was able to understand more how to move, how to do my massage and my techniques because of my education. And I, that I just brought right into my practice. 
and today I have I have my own my own method and an exercise program that I've developed and I have a I came out initially to Los Angeles from Miami to further my music career so I have a music degree degree in music and I still play there's my um, one of my guitars in the background so it's always close by I could grab it off the wall and play a little bit and so I've had, I've had a very rich, full life. I just, I, I want to congratulate myself. I'm a new, new grandfather. As of a couple of weeks, my daughter had a baby girl called, uh, her name is, she's called, her name is Savannah. And it's, uh, it's been a beautiful life. And I'm, I'm glad I'm still here to share my story because there's a lot of things that I have to share. And going back to what happened with me, living a very healthy life, I never considered going to the doctor very much because, hey, I'm a doctor and I'm feeling good and I'm doing all the good things, taking care of myself. But about three years ago, I noticed, I noticed a little patch underneath my eye. It's under one of them. And that is technically called, uh, well, there's a technical name for it, but most people that have this little lesion on, their, on the surface of the skin, it means there's an abundance, too much cholesterol in the, in the body. And I come from a family history of heart disease and high blood pressure. My blood pressure has been fine. So I was kind of casually addressing my high cholesterol lab values. And I was doing different, trying different diets, but I was still, I was actually still eating a lot of animal products. And the, the biggest thing for cholesterol is the sugar. And so I was always having a lot of fruit, a lot of smoothies, everything. And I just was work, I was working on it. And then in March of 2020, I had a pressure on my chest and the pressure uh, wasn't going away. I was at the office. I was going to see a couple of patients and it felt like almost like indigestion. I had this incredible comfortable chair. So I sat down in the chair and I thought that I would take care of it and it didn't. And so I got up and of course, in my office, I have ways to take my blood pressure. I took my blood pressure my blood pressure is never high. It was so scary high. I knew right then and there that something was seriously the matter. And so fortunately my buddy, uh, one of my colleagues uh, took me to the ER and there's actually more to the story, but we're gonna, we'll cut to the chase. And as soon as I got to the ER, fortunately, it was right before the pandemic. So it was really cool. I was down in Santa Monica, UCLA, Santa Monica, and they were great. And they took it. They gave me an EKG. And the minute they gave me EKG, and I actually, I, I had some background on, on what actually happens if and when you have a heart attack. So I was, I was kind of prepared. And they said, they said, we have to rush you to the cath lab immediately. And so right then and there, I knew I was, I was needed to have a procedure. Uh, it's called an angiogram. And they run it up through the radial artery. It's just amazing. I mean, I, I consider myself a holistic doctor and I love what I do, but it's always so, so great. The system that we have where if you have a major serious emergency, we have technology that can, can literally save someone's life. And they actually did. They saved my life because I had what is known as a widowmaker heart attack. And so one of the, the main vessels to the heart that supplies vessels to the heart was a hundred percent blocked. And so they went through that artery that was blocked. They threw in a couple of stents and the minute they open up the stents, it's, it's like the plumber came over and you had such a stuffed train and he ran the snake down there and all of a sudden turned the faucet on and just, just flowed right through. The pressure was totally gone. 
I was, uh, I stayed overnight in the ICU just for observation, but I went home the next day and I was completely stunned at everything that happened. I said, how could this possibly happen to me? And so because I didn't have, because I didn't pass, usually when somebody has this that happens to them, they just pass out and they die because there's no blood pressure. There's no blood to the heart. So for, fortunately, I made it there in time for, for me not to even pass out. And they open up the vessel and here I am today. And I went, I treated a patient. I went in on Friday. I came out Saturday. I treated a patient on Monday. Now, was I the same person? Did I have some other physical symptoms? Did I feel 100% normal? No, I didn't. But my heart was got the blood supply it needed. And I decided I just didn't want to tell anybody what happened because I needed to soul search within myself. And I spent a whole year not telling anybody except my family, not my close patients. Nobody knew that actually what happened. And I, I went through cardiac rehab. There, there was a bunch of things I went through and I, got some great doctors I've been working with. And of course they wanted to put me on meds, which they did, uh, the cholesterol medication and medication that thins the blood. And I went through a year of that. And I did a public Zoom meeting one year after, in March of this year, I did a public Zoom meeting, which is, that's the link I sent you, Chef, Chef AJ. And it just gives you a little bit of a, the, the video gives you an overview in like 10 minutes of what happened. And so I would, I would like to have everybody watch that video because most people go through life and they just don't know their health. You can't feel cholesterol. You can't feel your blood pressure. Women are more at risk for something called osteoporosis, which one, in two women over the age of 50 will get osteoporosis. This is a very serious condition. This is like a, another silent killer. So why did this happen to me? I didn't know my health as, as good as I should have. I think everyone should be going for annual checkups to get their lab tests, to see how their blood levels are. I think everyone should know what their blood pressure is. Everyone should know what, if there's any abnormalities in your lab tests. And I just never went for lab tests. So I just figured, you know, I'm gonna live forever and nothing's gonna to happen to me. And the, I have a whole new life since that happened. I rebranded myself. I went plant-based completely. I started to hook into uh, Joel Furman the end of heart disease in his books. And uh, I love, I love him. I, I have a doctor that was, that used to work. It still is working with Dr. Furman. His name is Dr. Uh, Joe Benton. So that's a doctor I'm working with. And uh, I got off my meds. I'm not taking any meds anymore. My cholesterol is, is almost normal. And I'm continuing to work on that. I'm ready to take another blood test to, to see how, how I'm doing. And then I also had a scare with my prostate. So my PSA levels for, for men that are over 50, what's your PSA levels, men? Yeah, so I just didn't know my health as well as I should have. And now my practice has changed. When people come in, I ask these questions. I take their blood pressure. I find out when they, they had their last lab tests. I find out what their vitamin D levels are. Almost everybody has low vitamin D levels. It's, it's insane and it's so easy to fix. So I'm here on more of a mission and I have a big story to tell and I'm glad to be able to share that with you and your, your audience. Well, that's quite a story. What, what did it feel like? I mean, because I've never had a heart attack and I'm told that men and women often present differently when they have a heart attack. It's not only men and women. I hear 
many scenarios. For me, I didn't have any pain. I had pressure. I had in the morning I got up, I felt like indigestion and then I had pressure in the chest. That's all I had. Now, it didn't feel, it wasn't overbearing, but something, something just wasn't right. And I just thought I needed a little rest. And like I said, I went into my chair and I rested, but that pressure didn't go away. So for me, it was pressure in the chest. For other people, you want to watch my video because I have information on what to look for. I mean, there's a lot of different things and it could be just a pain in the shoulder or it could be a pain in the neck, a pain in the arm, left arm, or, and lots of times there's no, there's no symptoms. And for me, I, I think the success rate for the widow makers, like two to 10%. It's ridiculous. So I'm just fortunate. I guess it's just not, it's not my time to go. That is amazing. Did um, any of the doctors that you saw, did they mention anything about diet to you? Uh, no. There, well, when I went through cardiac rehab, and that was a very, uh, most people don't know what cardiac rehab is. And so I could maybe share that with you. That's a, a, a whole big education. So I went into, uh, the, and there is diet attached to that, but I was not going to rely on the general medical system to educate me or guide me on diet. I went more with what I call a functional medicine doctor, like Joel Furman. He's an MD. And his focus is entirely on nutrition. So that's who I went with. And he, he spent his whole career. And that's all he does is work with a, a clean diet to reverse all the problems that we all have, which mostly is cancer and heart disease. So I didn't rely on anyone. And when I went through cardiac rehab, it's like a big gym. It, ha it actually happens to be in a hospital, but it's a big gym. It's got all the different machines and weights and they hook you up to a um, cordless EKG. They take your blood pressure right away. And so you get monitored with everything. It's so cool. I mean, we all should know how our heart is really functioning. So they check my, they're checking my heart during all the entire hour where I'll do a certain machine. I'll do a treadmill, I'll do a rowing machine. And during these activities, they're checking, they have great software and they're checking how my heart is reacting to the stress and how my heart is reacting when I finish my exercise. What's my recovery? There's so much valuable information I learned over during that entire year. The rehab was, I went 36 times to the to this rehab and it was it was the best thing that i could ever experience you know i i understand more about this whole spectrum of of health issues that many people have ts wants to know did you go off medication once your numbers were at a normal range i i had that conversation with Dr. Benton, I'm, I've never taken medication. I know all the side effects. I know the controversy with all the statins. So I work with Dr. Benton. And so what happened was he suggested that I stayed on a few of the medications because when I had my procedure, I had two stents put in my, in my, that vessel. So those stents are metal and they open up and it's an artificial, it's an artificial um, piece of equipment in your, in your vessel. So it's going to attract inflammation. So the idea of just being safe and, and keeping the blood a little thinner. So I was on aspirin, baby aspirin and a, um, a Plavix, uh, which is, I, I don't know, um, there's different names for these medications. Uh, 
And then I was on a statin. So I went, I, we decided to go off the statin and then I took myself off everything after about a year. So in my, my, my levels now are really good are much better. I was at, I was, I was pretty high when I went into have my, my procedure, my cholesterol was, was, was not crazy, crazy, crazy high, but it was high. Uh, Lori wants to know what your diet was like before your cardiac event and what's it like now? Uh, I would consider my diet before was more like, I only shop at Air One and Trader Joe's, all organic. And it would be more like keto. A lot of, I would have, I would allow myself to have dairy, but it would be raw. I'd have raw cheese. I have raw, I'd have um, organic eggs. I'd have, everything was organic. And just the, the best possible diet that you could imagine in that realm, in terms of the food, the food quality was great. Um, and then afterwards, I, after reading Joel Furman's End of Heart Disease, he has what he calls a nutritarian diet, which I, I don't know if I'm a, I would consider my, my diet exactly like his, but it's all plant-based now. You know, I'm, I, I, if my, my lab values are perfect, I could see myself occasionally having some, some animal products here and there, but very little. It's all plant-based now. How, where do you fall on the oil and fat spectrum? It's always so controversial with uh, I, I really think oil is, uh, it's a refined food. It's very volatile in terms of uh, how it can be, um, how it could turn, turn and, I, I don't think it's a, there's a lot of calories there. I'm not on very much oil. I think getting the oil from the, from the, the nuts and natural sources would be the best seed. Like I, I'll have flax seeds instead of flax oil. When I make my pesto, I'm going to show you my pesto and you don't have to add oil to pesto. There's so much oil in the nuts. It's like, it drips with oil and that's the oil I'll, I'll, I'll take. So I'll pass. I'm going to pass on the oil. Great. Nice. Did you want to show the recipe now or? Did yeah, you? I have a couple of things to share with you. I, uh, that I thought would be great for the show. Uh, the first one is uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the kitchen and, uh, and appliances because we all have, we all have a refrigerator. So the, from the top to the, the, in order of significance and importance, of course, you need a refrigerator. Then you need a stove. Now it could be a toaster oven. So those would be two really strong staples. The next one in line for me is my blender. So I think blenders, I use that every day. Blender's great. Now next on the list, and a lot of people don't have this, is a food processor. Now, of course, it takes up space. And why do you really need it? Well, if you could have a couple of meals that, that are so easy to make and so healthy, then maybe it might even sway you to get a food processor. So that's going to be the first presentation I'm going to, going to show, sh share with you. I'm going to share with you how to make the easiest pesto dish, how to make pesto from Trader Joe's. So I call it TJ, uh, TJ pesto. And this is a staple my, in my refrigerator. I always have a jar of pesto because it comes in, it's so handy to have. And if you could make something all the time like this, it, the food processor, it makes it worthwhile just to get a food processor just for that. So let's, um, let's take a look at that. What's gonna happen is there's gonna, be a, there's gonna be like a two minute movie and then we'll go through the steps again. So let me bring up my- Sounds screen. good. Let's see where it is. I have three screens, so let's see what we figure it out here. Okay, so, okay, here we go. So TJ Pesto, 
this recipe just might sway you to add another gadget to your kitchen. <laughs> so that's actually a picture of my Cuisinart. I'm not <laughs> promoting Cuisinart, but it, it works and it is a, a good brand. So let's take a look at this video, the quick video. It's a two minute video on how to, how to make pesto with your food processor. You could hear the music okay? Uh, I, I can, yeah? yes. Okay, good. Here's what we're gonna do to make fantastic pesto. Really basic, but really good. We're gonna start with our canned fresh bacon. First we can they have it. Then we have organic raw. Then we have raw. There you have it. Delicious. All right. So it was done quickly. We're just going to take you through the size really quickly. And then I'll make a few, a few comments where I think might help. And then if there's any questions from the, from your uh, audience, I'd be happy to take some questions. So you, you first need to rinse the basil. It's also, this is also simple. It really, a robot can do it. Uh, the big, thick stems, I really, I mean, you probably could use the stems. It would make it a little bit more bitter. So I, when I destock, not the stems, the stalk. So I destock the basil leaves. So the small stems on the basil is fine. And then this happens to be, I have a, actually, that's my model. And they probably a hundred bucks, you get a nice food processor. We're going to toss in the walnuts. We're going to toss in the pine nuts. We're going to toss in the basil. And then we're going to add some lemon. Now, going back to the basil and everything, it, it starts to get very thick in terms of the machine moving. So what you didn't, what you saw there is I, I did add some water because it was just wasn't moving. So you could toss in a little water to make sure it gets moving. And once it gets moving, you're fine. So why would you want to get a food processor? Well, if you use it, if you have like a recipe from Trader Joe's that you're going to make it every week, it would be worth it to get it. And it's a great, it is a great tool. If you like to make meals from scratch, that's another great reason to get it. If you're entertaining, well, it could be so quick to throw in the carrots, throw in the lettuce, throw it, it just shreds everything in two seconds and everything's done. 
My machine, you want to have a lot of power. My machine has 350 watts. It's an eight cup bowl. That's how they kind of uh, tell you how big it is. A cup is fine for a family of four. You have shredding discs and all kinds of things on there. And it uh, cost me $99.95. And so that's the first presentation. We could go back to stopping share, stop share, let me come over here. Okay. And I'm gonna put you side to side with you, with me. Yeah, that's better. Uh, do you have any questions, Chef? I mean? Well, I just I wanted to tell you, I didn't wanna interrupt. Even though I could hear your video perfectly, the viewers couldn't. So I don't know if that has something to do with the Zoom transmission because I had no problem hearing it, but the live viewers couldn't. So it's possible that it will be on the replay. I just don't know. Well, here's the... Here's the good news. The good news is there wasn't much audio except for music during that speeded up portion. And then I just said in the beginning, that's all you need is those items. So it, there's not much to the to the video. So yeah. we're I think we'll be fine there. Good. The good. next presentation doesn't have any any movie. So we won't have any. Issues. You know, I've, I've never actually made pesto with walnuts. I've always used pine nuts, but you know, walnuts are probably much healthier and much more affordable. Sure. Uh, I, th from my understanding, uh, pesto does have walnuts, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm maybe, I, I think I, it can be. I don't think there's, I don't think it's set in stone. It's just in culinary. Okay. I, I think don't, pine nuts is a pine nuts is the, is the, is the most important part of a pesto to have some pine nuts in there. But again, like it could be just any kind of nut. Yeah, no worries. Barbara says, how does your food processor compare to a Vitamix? Okay, well, that's where we had the discussion of the hierarchy of a different equipment. A blender, a Vitamix is a blender. And I've, I've actually made this pesto in the, my Vitamix before I had a food processor. You can do it. So it has a blade at the bottom and it spins really fast. But if you wanna make something that's gonna grind something up like what I just showed you, it makes it so much easier. It's like, it's like having, it's like trying to unscrew something with the wrong screwdriver. <laughs> You might be able to do it, but you're going to strip the you're going to strip the head off of the screw. It, it, when you have the right equipment, it makes all the difference in the world. There's going to be situations where you're going to want a food processor, and there's situations where a blender is best. So it's really there. There, they there is some cross. You, you can do some things with a, the Vitamix, but um, I would I would get something like a food processor for making pesto. Nice. What, what do you put it on? Oh, I, I love it on, I love it on noodles, any kind of noodles. Uh, I love it on any kind of cracker. I love it on, you could mix it in a salad, salad dressings. It's, it makes the salad dressing so fantastic. Because I make all my salad dressings. I would never buy store-bought salad dressing. That is crazy to do that. Yeah, it, it, they don't taste as good. No, it's not, not fresh. And they have, um, they have oils in there. I, you don't need oil. You don't need oil in your salad dressing. No, I, I agree completely. Absolutely. Are you still an avid exerciser? Yeah, I'm... I think it's very important in the whole process of looking at the, the whole body and health is that you want to have that component. And a big thing that I'm instituting with all my patients is really having them understand the circadian rhythms and Ayurvedic medicine. What you want to do is you want to understand when is the best time to exercise, when's the best time to eat. And that's almost as important as the process of, of exercising or eating healthy. So, so you want to exercise, exercise in the morning, get out there on some with bare feet, 
I have a program where I get some sticks going. I have some sticks that I've created and it's the best thing to do a good 20 minute workout first thing in the morning. I agree. Morning is best. Do you work with patients in person only virtually? How do you work with people and what do you work with people on? Uh, well, I have a very unique practice because as a chiropractor, uh, first off, I am consider myself part-time practice. I have an office in, in Los Angeles. I'm on Venice Boulevard, not far from, uh, I'm in Mar Vista area, not far from Venice high school. So I see, P I see patients all the time, but it's limited because my, my emphasis right now is online. I've been in practice 40 years. It's time for me to take my knowledge and share it with the world. I have so many things to, to offer. And so the type of patients that come in um, want more of a holistic approach. Okay. And that would be education, education on, on whatever is involved with their health issue. Great. Irene wants to know, what's your take on supplement? Supplements. Supplements. Supplements are, it's just what the name implies. It's something to add on. And supplements, uh, I always recommend supplements. Now, what supplements? It just, just depends on, on what somebody needs. But there are some basic supplements that I recommend. And when I I do cleanses with patients. I have a 60 day achievement program and we do a cleanse and there's seven supplements to help facilitate the movement, uh, the facilitation of the detoxification process through the colon. So there'll be supplements like probiotics and colon cleansers and digestive enzymes and multivitamins and like that. So supplements, I don't, I don't have I don't have any big store. I don't carry supplements. I have a dispensary. So I use full script patients come in, whether they're seeing me locally or remotely, which I, I see a lot of people remotely, then I could just send them a prescription and they could order the supplements for cheaper that they could get it anywhere else. So they get it, they get a discount, a good discount. And, you know, I, I make a little money on it as well. Thanks. Uh, Kathy says, do you have any tips to help for sleep? For me, it's staying asleep. I usually awake one to two hours several times. Mm -hmm. So what I would, what I would suggest, it's a, it's a question that is not a black and white answer because I would first have to see what Kathy is doing in her day, but I could give you a couple of tips that maybe could help. You want to make sure that you're, you're eating your largest meal, like probably about noontime in the afternoon, eat a very light meal, give your space, make sure you're going to bed early. Okay. So the, the, the bedtime train leaves between 1030, between 10 and 11. So you want to make sure you're going to bed and you want to cut the electronics off about two hours before you go to bed. And you want to cut off all the electronics, take your Wi-Fi, just turn it off. And you want to, don't want to have any of that stuff in the room. Your bedroom is for sleeping. And so, and then there's, if you're going to do anything, melatonin is, is, a, is a good safe supplement on a temporary basis to, to explore. Uh, and did she say, did she, did Kathy say she has trouble staying asleep or? Staying asleep. Sounds yeah. Like so there's, there's a, probably a certain amount of stress in Kathy's life that we would see how we can reduce it. Also, I'm a huge fan of hypnotherapy. If you haven't explored hypnotherapy, there's so many ways for you to get in touch with the messenger, the messenger that's underneath all that consciousness of yours. And remove it, remove that negativity and remove the interference and remove the stresses that is creating a, um, a interference with you getting a, a good night's rest. So that's the big, that's what I would say beginning. That's what I would suggest. 
Great. Thank you. Did you have another video? And does, do you think there'll be sound in that one? Off oh, there's no, there's no sound in the next one. And the next, I know this is, this is a chef show. So I have a great meal. So that pesto thing, that's a little add on thing that I want to share with you a, a really super meal. And it has to do with kelp noodles. Have you done? I'm sure you've worked with kelp noodles before. Yeah, I love them. They're like a little bit crunchy and they're, they're practically no calories. That's right. And they're a lot healthier for you than most uh, other noodles. And my noodles are not that crunchy because we add ingredients that make them soft. So I, I love to share that with you. Yeah, please do. Okay, let's go through it. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to... that one. All right, let me find that share button. There we go. Share screen. Okay, from the beginning. Come on, baby. All right. Now the title of this uh, is not deceiving. And I'll explain. So it's kelp noodle nori surprise. So you, you're gonna see that we have kelp noodles in here and we are using nori, but what's the surprise? The surprise is really, this is what I would call a flexible recipe because once you have the secret of knowing how to prepare your kelp noodles, which is so simple, then you can create a any kind of noodle dish, however you want to prepare it, because the kelp noodles are, there's a neutral taste. It's not, there's not very much taste to the kelp noodles. So however you want to season it, if you want to add more nuts, if you want to add more sprouts, if you want to throw in some vegetables, you could do anything you want with your surprise. And the cool thing is that once we, we're going to get our meal together and we're going to roll it up with some nori. So let's take a look. So surprises can be good and good for you. So there's some background on me, which we went over before. I consider myself holistic nutritional practice and a lot of experience. So let's take a look. We're gonna start with the main ingredients. That's what the kelp noodles look like. There'll be lots of times where you won't even see them in the refrigerated section. And you can get them at Whole Foods, if you're not local in Los Angeles, Whole Foods carries it. You might be able, be able to order them. So that's one of the packages. There may be other packages, but this is one of the more popular packages, packaging of the kelp noodles. And locally, you can access them in the Erwan at the, and at the co-op. And I think also at Rainbow Acres. I just wanted to give you an idea of what's in these kelp noodles. So you have water, kelp of course, and sodium alginate. And that's it, it's not much, very few calories. And the uh, sodium alginate for your information is sodium salt extracted from the seaweed. Here's some more facts about kelp noodles. When you're having kelp noodles, you're getting a good supply of calcium there's iron in there, vitamin K, and most importantly, they are low in calories. So have a big meal, but don't eat too much. That's another Ayurvedic tip for you. From a scale of one to 10, 10 being you can't move after you've had a huge Thanksgiving meal, you want to monitor yourself and eat to a level of about five or six. So leave yourself from the table where you're not stuffed. All right, you're gonna first rinse the noodles. You're gonna separate them. They're gonna be like, Chef AJ mentioned they're crispy. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're almost hard. I mean, and they're kind of stuck together. It's like a big, big clump of these noodles that are very uh, stiff. So you wanna separate them you want to throw them in a big 
I like to see that mixing bowl. I want, I'd suggest a bigger mixing bowl. This is one of the key steps to make your noodles, to prepare your noodles the right way and make them softer. You're gonna add a tablespoon of baking soda. And also the, the noodles are sitting in water that's filled up to the noodles. Also the, the Word document that I sent you, Chef AJ, has every detailed step. So if you wanna have that available to your viewers, that would be great. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the show notes. Okay, great. So you're gonna place the noodles in a bowl, right? With spring water, then you add the baking soda. Then the next key step is you're gonna add one le uh, juice of a lemon. Now I took these pictures from another video. So this is not my suggestion with all, like she has some oil sitting on the counter. We are not using oil. So just forget about that, <laughs> that oil. We're not using it. So when you mix the lemon, when you mix the lemon and you mix the baking soda, you'll, it'll start to fizz. And when it starts to fizz, then you have a chemical reaction that's changing the texture of the noodle. It's gonna make it softer. You're gonna uh, massage and mix them. And you can actually leave it in the, leave, leave it where it is for 10, 15, 20 minutes. You wanna play with how soft you want the noodles to be. And also when I'm massaging, I'm actually taking it, I'm stretching the noodles. I'm, and they become very soft. I like them soft. You rinse and you strain. And remember, this is, you don't have to cook anything. That's the best part too. It's a very easy meal. I always have a, a package of kelp noodles in my refrigerator. All right, here's what I'm adding. Once again, once you have your noodles, make it a surprise. You could do anything you want with these noodles, but let me show you what I'm doing with it. I'm gonna add a, a, a tablespoon of raw nut butter. Now it so happens here that I have raw pistachio butter, organic raw pistachio butter. Uh, I like it. I like cashew, any of the nut butters, whatever you like, go ahead and you play, toss it in the bowl. Then I also have some sprouts in there. Those are broccoli, uh, alfalfa broccoli sprouts. You can put any sprouts you want in there. And then I also have a sp sprinkling green nori seaweed. So that's just a seasoning. I think it might, well, the, there's pieces of nori and there's other things in there too, sesame seeds. And I got that from Air One. So, uh, all right. So there's a noodles, the sprouts, and the nut butter. So that's what you have in the bowl so far. And I'd get a big bowl so you could have all this where it's easy to mix once you place it in there. Now let's go put in a few other things. We're gonna to toss in an avocado. So one entire avocado we're gonna put in there. And you can see there's my scoop of pistachio, there's the sprinkle, there's the noodles, there's the sprouts, and there's the avocado. So this is my surprise. This is what I'm putting in. The main thing, since I'm gonna be rolling it up in a nori, sheet of nori, I want it to be something that's sticky. So the nut butter and the avocado makes, pulls everything together. And that's why I'm using, also using these ingredients. I like a uh, cheesy taste lots of times. So I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast. You could season this same meal that you're watching right now. You wanna add something else, add some onions, add some garlic chop up some kimchi, whatever you wanna do, uh, chop up some celery. You could do, you could add anything you want to this, this meal. Now, I don't know if any of you have rolled up sushi before, but I have a lot of experience way back when I used to, <laughs> I, was a, I was one of the best rollers <laughs> of rolling joints. So I have a lot of experience all the way from my uh, teenage years. So you get your bamboo roller out, it's on sitting on a, on a cutting board. I chop up and cut up the noodles so it makes it really easy to just take some out, mix and cut. There's the cutting board, bamboo roller. There's the nori sheet and we're ready to go. 
how much you put on there will determine how big the role is. So you have to play with that. And that, so you spread your concoction on the nori sheet. There's a little tiny bit of water that I'm gonna use as I roll up the nori. At the end, we're going to place a little water there to seal up the, the nori. So we're, we've rolled up the nori and before I completely roll it up, I'm gonna place a little water on the end there, we're gonna dab some water on the end and we roll it up, wet across here and we cut it up. Make sure you have to cut it up with an extra sharp knife. And every time you take a slice, I like a, I don't, I like a um, regular blade, not a serrated, serrated edge, a regular blade, real sharp chef knife. And you're gonna to have to wash it every time you think, make a slice because that allows you to cut through the nori. And I'm adding, as a dipping sauce, I have some mild, I have some organic spicy brown mustard. And that is what I have for you as my main meal. Are you, are right? you are, people are asking if you're a hundred percent raw. No, no, I'm hundred percent plant-based. So I, I love to, I have a beautiful cast iron wok. I'll throw in a little water and um, cook some onions, cook some garlic, throw in some broccoli and toss it in a salad. So no, I went raw for two years. So I've experienced that. It's it was pretty interesting. I used to hang out at Giuliano's. <laughs> I'm sure you, you know Giuliano. And it was interesting. I, I learned how you have to be very creative when you're a raw food, raw foodist. And I had another thing on your list. If you're going to do raw foods, you want to get a dehydrator. So I have a dehydrator too. And that's, uh, those are my two meals I have for you. Any other questions? What do you eat for breakfast? Usually have, usually have some oatmeal, some steel cut oats. And I almost always have a smoothie. So I have a smoothie with my Vitamix and I'll throw in, it might be plain with water with a few berries and then I'll add a bunch of superfoods and a green. So I'll throw in the, the greens I might have, I rotate the greens. My favorite green is mint or mm -hmm. celery. I love mint. So I'll, I'll dump in like two huge handfuls of mint. I'll cut open a fresh coconut and use the meat of the coconut and pour it in there. And then I love adding superfoods. And so that would be something to share with you. I don't know how much you're into all the superfoods, but they're great. Like flax seeds, cacao, gelatinized maca, hemp seed. I toss that into, into the mix. And even though I am plant-based, I do add I do have some, I do add some collagen powder, uh, a hydrolyzed collagen powder in there too, uh, just personally. And I do, I do take fish oils, but they're al algae, algae fish, algae fish oils. I guess that's a contradiction. They're the uh, omega threes. Somebody has asked me a question in the chat, but if you'd like to answer it, you can as well. They asked if I would be willing to eat a steak if they donated $100,000 to charity. And so my answer is I don't do anything for fee that I wouldn't do for free. Mm -hmm. So no. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Maybe if it was a million. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, though, because that's a, there's a, there's a joke with by George Bernard Shaw, I believe, about uh, prostitution and about. Yeah, like, didn't they have there was a movie like that where the girl was something like, ladies, please, will you have sex with me for ten dollars? Or no, will you have sex with me uh, for a million dollars? Well, of course. And then he goes, well, what about for ten? Well, what kind of woman do you think I am? Well, we've already <laughs> ascertained that we're just negotiating the price. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. You have to, you have to stick to your guns. I mean, it's, that, that's important. Now, if you're completely plant-based, you want to be smart about how you're eating. Uh, so vitamin, your B12 is, I always have on hand my B12 supplements. Where are they? 
It's so funny because now he's now the person is saying, well, would you eat it if you were starving? But, you know, I don't like hypothetical questions because you don't know the answer until you're in the situation. And yeah, if I was so. starving, why would there be a steak? Like, why what, Like why would that be the only food there? You know, I'm sorry. You have to talk for us to see that what you're holding up. Because oh, it's B12, vitamin B12. Um, so you, it, that's something that if you're completely v- vegetarian, you want to make sure that you're you're smart about it and you you get educated on what you need to make sure you're that's where supplements can really be very important there's a question do you recommend specific lab tests that people get especially females once a year or so yeah it depends on the age too so you want to uh the the biggest concern i have for females is their bone health because they don't know my mother i'm working with my mom right now she's 86 and she has osteoporosis and so I have an exercise program specifically for that. And so you want to know your health. So just you want to, you get your basic screening, your basic, your basic panels, and then make sure vitamin D and vitamin K, there's actually a way that you can test for vitamin K. And that's very important. Most people don't know these levels. And if you're a woman that's like, 30, about 30, that's when your bones are the strongest. I really recommend uh, getting a bone scan because you don't know how your bones, uh, you don't know the density of your bones. You can't feel that. So you get a bone scan to be able to see where you're at. And then when you're 50, 55, when the change of life is occurring, then you want to see where your bones are at there. And then you can be a lot smarter how you can approach um, your, your bone health if it, if it is dropping, if your bone density is dropping. Nice. Well, great. Let's see. Uh, Karen says, what do you think a normal B12 level is? That's a good question. I, I, I don't, I'd have to take a look at the, um, the, the lab values. I don't, I consider myself holistic nutritionist. So I get into it a lot, but in terms of uh, all the tests, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. So I, I, I don't know how to answer that. All right. Thanks. All right. Well, how do people connect with you? Do you, are you active on any of the social medias? Mm-hmm. Or? I do a live stream every week and I have my, my flagship program is the 60 day achievement program, but the best way to reach me is just my, I rebranded myself. Just go to David Allen wellness and you'll find me there. Uh, I have a, a website with a lot of information and then you can go to David Allen events. That's to see any of my live shows. And so once you get into my website, there's a few tabs and if you click on about you'll see david allen events so you could go to david allen events and you could see uh drop in and take a look at what i'm doing with my 60-day achievement program it's a way it's a way to take to have a plan to lose weight to turn your life around whatever health issue you have you could turn it around in 60 days that's great. Well, thank you for not dying, by the way. Mm, oh, thank you for <laughs> thank you for being here, so I can continue uh, and to reach more people to share my share my messages. There's a lot of experience that I have, and I'm grateful uh, to you to, that I can I can be here and share with you. Great. Thanks so much, Dr. Allen. It was a pleasure meeting you. Great. Same here. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have another wonderful doctor. The doctor's name is Dee Nice, and she's going to be talking about teen wellness. Take care, Dr. Allen. Maybe come play a song for us sometime. I see oh, absolutely.